So I'll be unboxing this Amcrest Smart Home Floodlight Motion Sensor to replace this motion sensing floodlight. This one has a camera and a PIR motion sensor, so it's pretty good at picking up all of the detections. And I'll pair it with Frigate for person and pet detection, and I'll get some nice coverage on my back uh, driveway. I'm gonna do a quick unboxing, which I really haven't done on this channel, so I'm gonna just try <laughs> and get some practice. We have the installation guide, which we will use, and then we have some support and um, free two-year warranty, which we will redeem, feedback, join our community. Let's get started with the app and then just some specifics for the setup guide. I've done this twice already, um, although more than a year or two ago, so I might be a little rusty, but I think I'll remember the gist of it. Here we have the floodlight and all this can be moved around so that we can get our right angles. Accessories include the screws, wire nuts, and a little hanging helper to help us get this all up. And some extra screws and drywall anchors for the mounting plate, which is right here. Well packaged, but not too much fluff either. And I quite like that I don't need a subscription for it to work. The app is a little clunky for Amcrest, but I'll be using Frigate, um, which I'll have all that later in this video on how to set it up. You use these little knobs down here to loosen, find your notch, and then tighten again. Get it all kind of set up and I like to get it a little bit ready before I get on the ladder, but this is pretty much the gist of the angle. I like this Amcrest setup versus like a Google Nest or an Amazon Ring camera. The spotlights are actually pretty bright. They're hardwired in, not on battery. The camera isn't the best quality in the world, but it's more than enough to identify people and pets. Uh, it will not be very good for facial recognition, primarily because of the angle of it. It's looking down at the top of your head, not right up at your face, uh, especially when I've got it mounted up here above the garage. Um, I have two of these. I like them so far. They're pretty reliable and frigate, despite being a Wi-Fi camera. Usually you want PoE, but they've been pretty decent so far. Let's set this thing up. In the way of tools, all we're really gonna need is a screwdriver, a voltage tester, and the screws and wire nuts that came with the Amcrest camera. Everything else should be pretty easy to do by hand with a screwdriver. You might wanna drill, we'll see when we get there. You're gonna need a ladder if you're getting up to a tall place like this, but it's not that many tools required. I do need to say though, this is electricity. This is high voltage, 120 volts here in the US. This can hurt and kill you if you do it wrong. It's not that complicated, but if you don't believe that you can do this, or if you get up there and it doesn't look like what you're expecting, call an electrician, don't risk it. Um, if you have a pretty clean wiring and you have a little bit of experience with this, it's not too bad to get into. So the first thing we'll do is come and make sure that the light switch is off. It'll effectively cut power to the light outside. You could use a drill for this, but I got this new fancy screwdriver for Christmas. So I will be using this. And here we have the light down. We can kind of just let it dangle. And I'm gonna get a voltage tester to check these connections and make sure that we're safe to unplug them. So I have my non-contact voltage tester. And if I hold it up to the wires, we don't get a beep and it doesn't flash red saying that there's no voltage. So we're good to reach up here and identify our wires that we'll be using. So here you can see, I think this is the neutral, the white, and this is the hot, the black, um, but it's very simple. We're gonna replace this little bracket here to mount the Amcrest onto and then wire nut on the new wires. We have a white, a black, and a green or ground. The switch goes straight to this outlet. So this is a very simple swap. So all I'm gonna do is remove the wire nut by screwing counterclockwise. And again, we've already checked that there's no voltage here. You could turn the breaker off, but I just did it with the light switch on the wall. We've got our wires. 
And then I'm going to unscrew this mounting plate bracket. And it comes right off. So next up, I'm gonna grab the mounting plate. It's important you use the one that came with it for this foam seal to make sure it's a watertight connection when it sandwiches on. So I ended up just doing this and the screws I originally picked didn't fit. So I'm going for the longer, skinnier screws instead of the shorter, fatter screws. The plate is labeled with front and up to help you orient it. And you wanna get make sure your wires are through this fat center part. I'm gonna do the best you can to align this, and then I'm gonna start the screws by hand. And I'll make sure these are pretty tight. We want to squish the foam so that it's a watertight connection. I wouldn't say you need to go crazy hard, but enough that rain won't get in, and then alternate to make sure they're both tight. So it's on there pretty firm. We'll come back up with the light. So before we hang this camera, we're gonna put an SD card. You might not want or need an SD card on this. Um, I'm going to be doing this because while I trust Frigate, it's always nice to have a backup. And the way we're gonna to get to it is we're gonna twist this top plate of the Amcrest camera. It pops off and there's a little SD card slot right here. So I've just got an extra 16 gig SD card laying around. Pop it in there. And then put the cover back on. And make sure it's on good so it's watertight. Just like that. I'm gonna try and explain this before I get on the ladder. We're gonna use the three wire nuts that came with it to wire up our neutral, our hots, and our ground. We're gonna use these hooks that came with it. We're gonna hook onto the bracket. We'll hook it through here and let it dangle. This will give us a bit of a helping hand to keep it nearby while we wire these up. And then we will use the long screw that came with it with the little rubber washer through the middle to mount it to the bracket, just like that. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Again, just make sure that your electricity is off when we're using the wire nuts. It could shock you. So I'm now gonna climb the ladder with the Amcrest camera and light. I'm gonna hook up this little helping hand. I'm just gonna find a spot where it's kind of out of the way and I can dangle it. And then I'm just gonna hook it up to one of the arms on the, the light and camera. The first one I'm gonna do is the ground. I'm gonna just loop it around this green screw on the mounting bracket and that's to ground the mounting bracket. And then I'm gonna just twist it over this ground wire and use a nut. I'm gonna make sure the wires twist together well inside of that nut. That kind of took a second to catch. Next one, I'm gonna grab my black wire and mat match it to the black one on the receptacle and do the same with the mounting nut or the wire nut. Give it a little tug to make sure it's not gonna come out. And then do the same with the white wire. This is assuming your wires match, <laughs> that it's wired properly. You can't always trust the color. So if it doesn't work, you can get a wire tester out and check that. I'm gonna get the long screw to mount it ready. And I'm going to unhook the helping hand I'm going to tuck these other wires up in here. Depending on how stiff your wires are, will be different level of difficulty there. Put the screw through, find the center hole. And you just want to go till it's real snug. It's got to kind of bite into the foam a little bit. So don't stop as soon as you get resistance. So that's on there pretty snug. Now that we have this mounted, we can play around with the lights and the angle of the lights a little bit better. You might find that you wanna come back at night to do this, but I'm not gonna to be too picky. You just loosen these finger notches, twist it 
loosely to the angle you want. I just want an even spread on my driveway. And then I'm going to grab the camera and I want to do a little bit higher up. It's a pretty wide angle and I'll tighten that one in. Just kind of check that we're pretty even looking and that should be good. So now I will walk into the garage and turn on the light switch for that receptacle. And this light switch is now just gonna stay on all the time, which is how it previously worked because the old light also had a motion sensor. And once we turn it on, we can see a red light up there. You can see right above the Amcrest logo, right there, there's a red light just under the camera lens. And now it's flashing green. So now inside of the Amcrest app, you need to scan the QR code, which required me getting back on the ladder for this one. And once you scan the QR code, it should pop right up and you'll need to connect to the local Wi-Fi that the light is giving off. Note that I needed to turn off my VPN because it wasn't seeing any local uh, networking. You'll set a device password, but don't forget this because you'll need it later, especially to use Forget. And then you'll set an email for recovery. Choose your local Wi-Fi that you're using. I'm using my IoT network and then give it a minute to connect. Give it a name and you should start seeing the video feed pretty quickly. Using the small screen on the phone, go ahead and climb back up on the ladder and adjust the video to make sure that you're getting the area that you want to capture and test the light and everything while you're here before you go to the computer or put the ladder away. So I've got the camera and lights mounted up here. They seem to work great. I'm now going to go to my computer to finish setting it up and get this imported into Frigate and Home Assistant and get everything set up just how I'd like. All right, now that our camera is installed and on, we're gonna to go to your computer and go into Home Assistant. You'll notice right away that there's no integration for Amcrest. There is, however, one for the generic brand called Dahua. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but it's a custom integration from the Home Assistant Community Store, also known as Hacks. If you don't have Hacks, check out my YouTube channel. I have a video on how to get this installed. And we're gonna look for the Dahua integration by R Roller and go ahead and install that. If you go back to your integrations, once that's installed, you'll notice this integration. And I already have two of these floodlight cameras, but I'm gonna click on add entry and we're gonna use the name admin, and then we're gonna use the password that you set on the app, and then we'll enter the IP address, and we'll leave all of these other ones alone. We'll click done, click submit. We'll choose a name, um, garage floodlight, I already set that, and then I'll do the driveway for the zone. And when you first add this device, it's only gonna show nine entities. That's okay, more will load. Just give it a minute and they should pop up. So I just went on the Amcrest app and restarted this garage floodlight. And while that's restarting, we're going to go to the amcrest.com website and download their software, IP config software. This is optional, but it's a great way to quickly change a lot of settings on this camera. I don't really love using an app for that and it's easier for me to record and go through it on a computer. It looks a little sketch. Um, I've used this in the past, it's fine. There's some settings in here that we wanna get access to, especially for Frigate. And these settings, I don't think were available in the app. I can't quite remember. So once you have the Amcrest IP config software loaded, you're gonna to wanna to change your default settings here and include the password that you set in the app as the default password and it should pull up the IPs of the cameras on your network. If not, you can go to login and go directly to a camera. And I'm gonna to go to the camera I just added and go to this little settings config gear icon. And we're gonna to go to the encode tab and we're gonna change some settings here. Um, you can set the bit rate on this either way, but for our mainstream is gonna be where our recording happens. And we want this to be good. We want this to be a high quality recording. So I'm gonna bump this up to 4096. And the substream is really just to identify motion. Um, the way that the coral works in Frigate, it doesn't need a lot of pixels for the substream to work. 
So we're gonna bump this down to 512 bitrate because it doesn't need to be that clear. And this will save on bandwidth and settings as well. Um, the encode mode, I bumped down to H.264, down from H.265 to H.264, and we'll keep the resolution maxed out at 1080p, and we'll keep the resolution here at VGA for the substream. For the substream, though, we're going to bump our frame rate down to 15, just because it doesn't need that many frames to see stuff. This will be a lot easier to process and handle than doing 30. So we'll click Save on this. And we're pretty much done with using this Amcrest IP config tool. So inside of Home Assistant, we'll go to the Frigate tab. You could go to a separate um, tab in your browser for this, but I'm just gonna do it inside of Home Assistant. We'll go down to the settings, and then we'll go to the configuration editor. I really intend to make a video setting up Frigate and going through all this. It's just gonna take a ton of time and I haven't gotten around to it. But for this video, we're gonna just scroll down to our go-to RTC section and then streams, and I've got it sorted into um, segments, and I have an Amcrest segment here. So looking at this Amcrest segment, I'm just going to copy this entire back flood, backyard flood cam and backyard flood cam sub. I'm just gonna copy, paste, and get this one back in line. And then I'm gonna just name this garage flood cam. And I'm gonna change the port on this to my camera. I'll have this code on my website, chuck-builds.com, and I'll have it set up just so you can copy and paste it over. Um, I wanna apologize for having these code blocks. I was trying to figure out how to use the Opus Audio to make it load faster on my phone. I kind of gave up on that, but I didn't wanna lose my progress. But now that I have the Garage Flood Cam and Garage Flood Cam Sub, we're gonna scroll down to the actual cameras section and I'm gonna again copy the backyard flood cam and copy the entire thing. Press enter and paste it. Make sure everything lines up. And I'm gonna delete the zones because the zones that are set here are based on a different camera. And then I'm going to update the name to garage flood cam. I'm gonna copy that and then I'm just gonna replace it down here for garage flood cam and garage flood cam sub. Um, so this is referencing the GoToRTC, which then um, processes the camera feed from the camera through FFmpeg and then puts it into Frigate. So with this, I should be set to save and restart and it should come right back up. After Frigate restarts, we can now see that we have the camera here in the middle of the screen. It pulls right up. Now, these Amcrest cameras aren't inherently the best quality, but I really like the functionality of the light and the camera. It's more than enough for zone awareness, for turning on my backyard lights or notifying me that someone is there, but it is not gonna be an HD viewing experience it is more than fine at the bird's eye view. You can really see a lot, but actually getting it to load the HD video stream isn't necessarily going to knock your socks off. But I really enjoy this. I think it's been super helpful for me, for my backyard, to be able to see these camera feeds, see what the dogs are doing, what they're getting up to, noticing a person in the backyard to turn on the lights, and then I also have other cameras that are a little bit more focused on an actual concern that I have in more HD, such as the back door to my backyard. Um, overall, I think they're great value. I love the spotlight functionality and I love how easy it is to integrate it with the rest of my home assistant.